one. We are recording. Here we go. Welcome Good back, morning, everybody. everybody. To the God. Paul and Luke talk about fledgling instead of actually doing anything about fledgling show. Right. Exactly. Uh, episode five. Episode five. Um, I had I just I hadn't actually seen episode one, which is the reading of the transcript. So I, I did that over the last week. Oh yeah. Um, so I got caught up on some of that. I thought today uh, we'd talk about some of the um, uh, some of the past projects we've taken a stab at trying to get started, and then uh, try and select a little a sub piece. Now that we have um, some of the more core mechanics mm. uh, hammered out. So uh, what I was thinking in, in particular was uh, we have something called Breadwinner that we were working on, which was uh, like a like a, a, a focused perspective on um, trading resources into and out of the system. And the primary mechanic we were thinking of was something like a, you have things and spaces, and in each space at there are nested spaces, so we have nested spaces ups and down, and then also in every spaces we have both like an orderly area where there's a list of things that I can play with, and then also a uh, a chaotic a chaos space where we can we can throw things in and see what happens. So it's uh, trying to craft or trade or there's a lot of different interactions, but it'd be kind of a point and click adventure ish where you're you're tossing things in and seeing what happens. Mm. Um, right. So I was I was trying to figure out how to make that like a generalizable playable experience. And um, one of the things that you said last week was the the central mechanic you, you thought to for an interface is the AI engine is going to like basically spit out a list of options, mm. and then you select from one of those options. Right. Um, and if I'm doing like a, if we're doing like a, essentially a, a trading game where we're trading one type of currency or resource for another type of currency or resource, then that seems like a really uh, straight, well, seems like a straightforward application of that idea of being like. Here are five things you can do to trade whatever you have available to you to something else. Right. And then we kind of like, like walking into this. a town in Minecraft, and there's like all the different testificates or whatever, and they can you can trade them emeralds for various things. Uh, right. So you end up having kind of a preset of options to, mm. to pick from. Mm. And again, the, the scope of Fledgling can do everything. Uh, ends up being really hard to design around and mm. and control for good experience. But something that's popping up some options, and then you're like, okay, well, I have I have wheat, and it's like, well, you can trade a bunch of wheat to get it, you know, a cat, or you can. Cats here we're gonna wheat, have wheat whatever. to get yeah. more wheat. Sure. Or sure, uh, more wheat. And there's good good deals and bad deals, and that seems all like. A parametric could be handled parametrically mm. uh, and like depending on which trade you perform a, a different amount of time passes sure like and then that could even be up front right it could spit it's like okay take three days to just generate wheat take 10 minutes to trade away everything you own for a tulip <laughs> <laughs> or whatever else right sure sure um but then the the scope is is bound by our own design, mm. right? It w and that well, seems yeah. We're telling the computer what it is that the options are to to trade for, however that works. I remember when we right. first started talking about this, I drew a little picture of like I, I was trying to find it, but I couldn't couldn't find it. But I drew a little picture of like um, an island with like a bay, and it had a, a little. Uh, jetty in it and then the island also had a mountain it was kind of like the mist island a little bit where it's got you know like the mountain yeah. on one side and then there's some forest yeah. and a little town it was like on one side of the bay there's forest on the other side of the bay there's a town and then like on the far side of the mountain there's some fields and so it was like okay well you've got the fields and, and you've got some cows or, or animals herd animals of some kind 
So there's like ranching and farming and trading at the port. And then there's a town where you can make stuff and the mountain where there's a wizard or whatever, and or maybe a lighthouse. And then there's like the forest on the other side where there's like, you know, trees and wild animals and things. Right. And that actually was really clean because like when you're talking about the lighthouse or maybe the wizard's tower, um, I would, the, the, mechanic was a little vague to me how that was going to construct but now it's like you walk to the edge of the island and you find here's a list of five things that you found hmm. and it's, or and or is it okay is it five things that you world. did find or is it five things that that you could find five things you could find and then like when you pick one the other ones didn't actually ever exist correct yeah uh, yeah yeah so like you, you walk to the edge of the island and there's a wizard's tower. You walk to the top of the mountain, also a wizard's tower. Other far side, wizard's tower, right? Like you could just cover wizard right. island. We, we Basically, it would be a way to make wizard island. Mm. Um, and especially if I, like, I, would, I would give people... But there's a lot of ways. This has already been thought out for like mechanics of re-rolls and like a certain number of attempts and like uh, the... The loot box experience of like here's a here's select from this set of things. Yeah, and we don't even have to get like select select a a random pull select the 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 slot machine that you're going to pull the lever on or whatever. Right, right, and it it, it's helpful in a sense because it it gates you from one side to the next. About like uh, go exploring normally doesn't give you any options, but you could. You could. I don't see any reason why you couldn't just like. Here's the five options, and mm-hmm. then like you could also make a meta choice. It's like, uh, zoom out. What type of five options do you want? Do you want to explore a coastal thing? Do you want to mm-hmm. explore a dangerous thing, or whatever qualities? And then you could. Yeah. Then you click on that button, and then you could open. You, that, that seems like a lever that the designer could. Uh, have access to into what types of options the person is getting at which juncture Mm. yeah which i think is actually the whole game yeah well it it could be like if it's part of part of the idea is that so part of the idea is is just that where you you have the tools to create the to craft the experience that you're trying to find but then the other part of it is having the tools to craft an experience that someone else would like so that you don't have to be there to craft it in person. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like make it, it's like a virtual GM kind of thing where you can set something up or set up a, uh, what scenario that then you, uh, can give to someone else and they can run through it without your supervision. Uh, right um so like in the case of breadwinner if it was if it was just like just the template archetypes for breadwinner then you would be setting up the island you could make a wizard island or you know a farming island or whatever but if it was the templates and a uh or the archetypes and a template for the island then it would maybe it would be already set up for you and it's like well you go this way and there is a forest and then maybe what do you want to do in the forest? Or maybe the forest is already set up as well, right? Like, what do you want to be in the forest? Or right. or here are some locations already in the forest. It it doesn't well, I, seem like there's a reason why it should have to be exclusive. But I guess if you wanted a forest that didn't have a wolf den in it, then like having the option to just say like, no, it's all meadows and <laughs> and fountains or whatever. Or in, yeah, ambiguous. Um, so there, there's a there's a mechanic in the uh, role playing game Fate, which I thought was really neat. Where you're like, um, you, you can have equipment, and a couple. One of the ways it recommends you manage equipment is uh, you have a, a backpack full of stuff, and you have three stuff in it. Okay. <laughs> and it's like when you come across a problem, you can with a quick check with the DM be like. I want to expend one of the stuff charges on my backpack to have a whatever in it that I happen to need right now. Mm, sure. And it allows you to, it's like you have to be able to back justify 
a little bit what you're allowed to have in there. But it's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I have a rope. And it's like, oh, right. That was I've the, cl- the classic rope, one, I right? guess. Like rope, loaf of bread, uh, a candle. You know, there's probably like a whole list of like miscellaneous items that you can justify or whatever. And then like right. when you want one off the list, you have to also pick like four others or whatever that are also in your backpack. But they, they just let you leave the other ones ambiguous. Mm. Right. But but like, so what I'm thinking is like, if you really have three stuff, what you really have, if you have three stuff, what you really have is three items that you're going to need plus like 20 that you actually will never need the, the, on this adventure, right? So you brought along all this stuff. Only three of them are going to be useful, but you have to haul around all the other stuff with you the whole time. So like, you know, you, you've got like 20 pounds of stuff, but you only get to use two pounds of it or, or however that works. Do, do you remember we had that the, the seven layered mechanic of like you, the all resources would be managed by having zero resources uh a pinch of it a bit of it small yeah, amount, yeah. A normal yeah, that's, amount that was and, in breadwinner right yeah, yeah. Uh, abundance and then we have like most uh, all of it yeah most and all or whatever yeah most and all so like the idea would be <laughs> the actual objective is to get all of the x right in, mm. in the case of breadwinner it would be all of the bread and as soon as you have all of the bread and resources that you win or but you can set that you can set a win condition anywhere you want it Right, and this this ends up being a little bit less like a um, glorious next generation um, AI powered thing, and more like a spreadsheet. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. got a bunch of lookup tables on it for sure. random encounters. Well, I mean, in the background, everything's going to be a spreadsheet to a computer. But yeah, right. So I, I thought it might actually end up being a, a fairly accessible place to begin. Especially since um, I can't actually code, but I can make spreadsheets. Right. I mean, I can code a little right. bit. And um, I I took attempt at this when we were doing like the the um, aspected. We were trying to make an economy game where everything was aspected off of the Babylonian concepts of. Oh, uh, from the Do Bible. You remember this? The yeah the um, the six. The six materials, the six valuable materials, wood and stone, brass and iron, gold and silver. Yeah, exactly. And we were thinking about about having that as a like our economy base and then like trying to yeah. get everything to be mutable across this yeah. screw these out. Anyway, and they were yeah, uh, and they were elementally associated with the sun and the moon, and so with day and night, right. and yeah, all those things. Anyway. Yeah, that's the type of stuff that I feel like could be um, useful to run in the background for properties. And if we can get the AI to uh, cleverly combine the properties on our behalf, then the the eventual hope is that we could just have a bucket of things and then you just dump them in with their parameters on it. And then the, the computer engine should be able to just grab it and, and seamlessly... Well, the, the engine should be able to grab and seamlessly integrate whatever's in that bucket without having to pre-sort it all. Mm. Yeah, w- without having to laboriously tag everything beforehand. Uh, right, if there's some way to... to up, yeah. I think you would... Uh, the way I'm thinking about it right now is you'd have to laboriously tag it at the beginning, mm. but not uh, build a relational table and try and figure out how it all works together. Right. That's kind of how the um, the recursive uh, universal architect works. Is you... I don't. Could you take a bit to talk about universal architect? I don't. Find it yeah. Uh, I um, let's see. Maybe I can pull it up on screen. Let me. I'll I'll go looking for it while I'm talking about it and see if I can find it. So universal architect is a thing. So we said at the beginning of the show that we we're going to talk about uh, various attempts that we have made to figure out how to do fledgling and stuff. Uh, so way back in. Uh, would have been 2008, I think. Uh, somewhere around 2008. Uh, I got, uh, no, let's see. No, it must have been later than that. It must have been 2009. Because it was after I was married. My wife got me a, um, 
Star Trek Enterprise D, uh, not floor plan, like plans, the plans, you know, the blueprints, the uh, official blueprints or whatever they were. And so I, uh, I was looking at those. I'm like, man, these are really cool. They don't make much sense, but I can see how you could kind of justify where everything is and what's going on. And I'll bet I could make a computer that could like a computer program that could solve this problem and, and like make deck plans. And so, uh, I was talking with Andy Wilkinson about it and we we're like, Oh, let's, let's figure out how to do this. And it would be, it would be a cool project. And so that was kind of the start of fledgling was, um, a computer that can generate spaceships, computer can make deck plans for spaceships more or less. Right. I think I've seen the result of this project before, right? Isn't the, the Tramp Destroyer or something like that an example of yeah, the thing that was yeah, kind created of. It was, by... Uh, it wasn't actually... It was, it was more of um, a practice run. So so procedural generation... So here's my, my rant about procedural generation on the way to talking about yeah. Universal Architect. If you want to have a computer build something, it's best to know how to build it yourself first. Now, this flies exactly in the face of what we were talking about last week, which was that you shouldn't uh, inject in what you shouldn't inject your own human expertise into a computer system. You should teach the computer how to learn, and then the uh, exponential growth of or the exponential falling price of computation will solve the problem for you in the long run, right? Right. Uh, so that was what we were saying last week, but in the short run. It's much more fun to inject your own expertise into the system. So, I, I also, I have no idea how to train a AI on yeah, yeah, fictitious it, it, deck plans of spaceships. Right, right. right. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know how to do that either. It seems like in the long run, that's how the problem is going to be solved. Um, but in the short run, it's I was. Okay, I don't know if this is actually a thing you could do, but I feel like you could... I mostly think in parametric generation when we're sitting around and talking. Mm. That's, that's really, when I think about proc gen, um, that's... And then we, we kind of switch back and forth between which problems are being solved with like a proc gen approach and which problems are being solved with an AI approach. Mm. And I was wondering if uh, you could take a... I don't know, like take one of my spreadsheets that generates... Uh, a proc gen space, right? There's a ton of world building, uh, procedural generation, world building tools out there that will generate a city or generate a town or generate a land um, that I'm familiar with. And it's like, what if you took that tool and then you spit out the uh, kind of the result, and then you just did that, you know, a hundred thousand times, and that became your data set. So your data set is, in fact, the procedural generation output, which is a distribution. Yes, I I think that is that I think that is possible. All right, I've got... I just don't know what the computer would do with it once you've got that going. But it seems like the only practical way to try and uh, get the get it a machine learning tool going okay let's see can you see um can you see my screen or no i'm capturing my screen i can see my screen but you can't see my screen let's see i can go over here and share my screen with you uh a window this window there so now you can see can you see this yeah perfect all right, so this is okay. Universal Architect. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can read it a little easier. There we go. So this is Universal Architect. It's a Python thing. You can find it at... Oh, let me drag the tab over from the other window. Um, well, we could throw a link in the yeah, description. Yeah, yeah. We okay. It. Well, here, here we go. So I can... Boom. Uh, so you go to junts.org, J-H-U-N-D-T-S.org. Click on Universal Architect, and it's right here. UA calc 0.2.py and specification.txt. So this is the the Python code. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it it's a recursive solver for nodes and stuff. And then the, here is the specification. 
And so the idea is that if you've got uh, a ship, right, and you need it to have a bridge and you need it to have a certain amount of firepower. Um, so that's what this says. It says, you know, here's the gunship Titania. It's got a bridge and it's got some sort of firepower. And then here's all the different things that you can use to build this ship. So it's got a power core and it's got generators and it's got backup generators and life support and bunk rooms and things like that. And the problem with spaceship design is if you have a certain amount of propulsion and you have a certain performance you need, but you also have some other stuff, when you add more other stuff, you need to add more engines and it needs to add more propulsion to drive the engines and also the other stuff. And so you need to add more engines for those things. And so it's a recursive right. problem. You can't just solve it once. You have to solve it over and over again until you, you come to a, a stable solution. So that's what this is supposed to do. So you run you run this code and it will spit out, uh, here's gunship titania.txt. And so this is generated 88 iterations and it's got 115 firepower. It's uh, using 605 for something. I forget where it uses firepower. But anyway, so it, it, here's all the specifications. You know, it's got this much structural integrity and this much hab and this much power is generated and all that stuff. And then you can see down at the bottom here. Point, point 0.8 engineers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the amount consumed. I think they're generated in, in whole units. Yeah, they're generated in... in in whole units. So you can see there are 23 engineers, but it only uses 22.2 engineers because some processes don't need a whole engineer all the time. So the idea is that you, it's like a part-time job to man some of the systems. Um, so anyway, and then here you can see all the nodes, all local nodes and resources are as follows. So it's got one bridge, it's got five main guns and so forth. So it solved this specification and it, it solved this actually three times. It solved it for gunship Titania. It also solved it for the bulk freighter and it solved it for um, something else. There was another there's another node in here. Let's see. And the fighter ship. Oh, here's the fighter ship. So the fighter ship's much smaller, um, but it still has all the same specifications. So it's using all the same systems. It just has only 40 firepower instead of 700. Um, Got it. All that stuff. So anyway, so that's that's what Universal Architect is. It's a general solution, node-solving, recursive uh, calculator, basically. And can um, you alter, like, uh, it seems like it would be very feasible to expose to a user the parameters of like efficiencies and things like this. So if I got some sort of cool technology that made my I don't know, engines lighter. Yeah, well, that right. is, that's that's what just... the specification is. So in, in here in the spec, let me zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. There we go. So in the specification, this specifies all the nodes and all of their properties. So let's see if I can find the engines. Uh, oh, there we go. Engineer, engineer, generators, big engines. There we go. So big engines, they have, they take up 500 volume. They use three emergency power and one crew and one engineer and they produce 8,000 thrust and they use 200 structural integrity and six fuel. So that's what a Got big it. engine node does. And so you can change this and to you, anything you, you want. You wrote that out by... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wrote this out by hand. So you can change this to anything you want and, and rerun the calculation and it'll regenerate this with a different a different number of engines and, and also a different number of crew because you need less crew or more crew depending on how the, efficient the engines are. And the, the cool thing, I think, so one of the really cool things about this is that um, up at the top, it uses um, uses new line-based syntax. So each line is a separate, you know, each carriage return separates commands. And the first character that it encounters, or the first line uh, that it encounters is the comment symbol. So like it's it's got a, in the specification text, it specifies the syntax as well as like the syntax symboling as well as the uh, I see. the nodes. So for that, when it generates Gunship Titania, it also generates uh, the syntaxing so that you can use Gunship Titania.txt and just copy the entirety into another specification file. And then you can insert a Gunship Titania node into something else. So if you had a carrier or something, you could put Gunship Titania in it. And then Gunship Titania is not recalculated. It's just treated as its own node. So it generates nodes that can be used in other nodes. So you can recursively use the results of your specification file in other specifications. So I thought that was pretty Perfect. cool. 
that is great. Um, I mean, so my, my dream still is to make the first actual fun experience blank fledgling. I, I think it's going to be Space Wheat, which I, I think about constantly. Yeah. Um, but that's that's a, that's a central hub around which I, I, I can think. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, Breadwinner, so Breadwinner seems is like, kind of associated with Space Wheat in that it's dealing with the economic systems. And right, also kind of right. uh, and then, an arbitrary, non-numeric quantity system. Right. Uh, it's, try, it's trying to get an abstract economy running. And I think that the Space Wheat experience of trying to interface with... Um, your farm or something like that mm -hmm. would feel a lot like breadwinner, I suspect. Anyway, uh, so the my objective out of this was to try and go from um, some stories of what we've built in the past and the tools we have sitting around and what what's like uh, an attempt one experience we could try and make. And I think something like... like um, uh, 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 choose your own adventure in mm. which uh, you have a, you're sitting in a node pile with arbitrary resources and you're rolling on stuff and trying to tr trade up and expand and I mean you can make a a, a a node system for for bread mm. basically mm. it's like the the guy who traded paperclip for a house kind of thing where it... mm. Yeah, I, I I would think so. Hmm. Um, and it just basically make a pretty simple economy game in which you start as a as a person and your options. You just you have five options and you can re-roll on them, or we could zoom in and zoom out. We could start working on that type of tooling as well. Hmm. And it seems like a, a very simple, minimal viable game would be you have five options. You don't have any other options. You can't do anything about. It. Maybe you can re-roll them forever if you want, and then you click on one of them, and it either modifies the nodes, or uh, it and either modifies their qualities, uh, and then gets recalculated, or you can get more or less of it. And be like, and I imagine, imagine that the text is going to read something like, um, "You have a bit of flour, right?" Uh, use mm -hmm. your bit of flour to, uh, you know, make a bit of bread. Sure. Or use whatever. And then you have a, a pile of things that you're trading off of this side to this other side. Mm. Because you could also, like, use most of your own resources or you could find a deal at the market. So that would be represented by, like, you're, you're trading a currency uh, of, like, dollars or something. You're like, well, spend $50, get two bread. Or spend some money um, to get some bread, mm -hmm. or something like this. Right, right. And and some some deals would be trade up, and some would be trade down. So you spend a lot of flour to get a little gold, or however it works. Exactly. And that should be able to like, if you have a bunch of, you have an inventory that's just like your stuff in a giant pile, and then you just are rolling against the parameters that are the same for the node structure, mm -hmm. then you should be able to just have a list of things generated by parametrically cycling through what you have and what's available, and then it just spits you some random, random options. Mm -hmm. And be like, oh, well, I guess uh, this is a good deal, but I'm trading it for fish now. <laughs> I find myself, <laughs> now I have fish. I, that doesn't help me with my bread thing, but hopefully it will come back later. But now that I have fish on my inventory, it's going to be reading that every time it goes to generate the options, and you're going to get more and more fish-related mm, tasks. Right, until so you trade um, away all your fish for something. Right. Mm. Right. And it, it could be a way for the thing to kind of slowly generate around you. Um, mm -hmm. Or ideally, the, the next feature would be to give people access to typing in their own nodes in real time. It's like, Oh, I want my world to be able to have crabs, so they just like type in a crab node mm. and drop that into their game, and then the game automatically picks it up, and now you're gonna have crab things 
crab options are going to start showing up. Sure, or sure. Whatever is there. Yeah, you can trade. And this is the fish for chitin or something. Right. And this is this is the general idea I was thinking for the islands. Like you show up on the island and it's blank, and it's like your options are explore, 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 explore. <laughs> And then the gameplay loop goes something like you land on an island and it's like explore. Like, well, ex- zoom in on explore. It's like explore uh, coast, explore mountains, explore whatever. It didn't mm. know any of those things existed and it generated it because you requested it. And then mm. as you go exploring the island, things start becoming part of your options. So it's like you found a wheat field. So now your options are explore, explore, uh, spend time, trade time for wheat all you have right now is time mm. all of the time mm. and you could you can keep trading it away for whatever or you have some time sure or whatever else yeah you don't know how much time you have i well because you don't you don't know the my my thought is to make each action a gamble in which you're right rolling right. dice against the resource that you have so sure. if you have some time you don't know how long that some time is going to last you, mm. but every once in a while it's going to be like 20% chance to decrease the amount of time you have. Now you only have a bit of time. Mm. Or you could also do it the other way. It's like, you, oh, you're going to trade a ton of bread, and then it's like, well, you you get increased your time quantities, and now you have a lot of time, mm. and all your rolls are much easier. Mm. Right. Right. So it's uh, depending on the quantity that you're trading against affects the odds that you'll decrement or increment your uh your quantity of that resource correct so i i'm blatantly stealing this from um uh another rpg system um the burning wheel is how it handles wealth Hmm. and i just thought it was just a very cool way to handle wealth it's a if your wealth is a skill check and if you pass your skill check, you're able to, like, I want to buy a sword. Well, a sword is a wealth minus one skill check. So mm-hmm. you're like, roll against my wealth. It's like, I pass. Therefore, I now have a sword and my wealth is unaffected. Mm. I fail. So now something happens. Either my wealth goes down or there's some other, like, GM introduced complication. Like, sure. well, you have to borrow some money. So now you have the same amount of wealth, but you also have a small amount of debt. Mm. But you still get the sword, or, or, or maybe you don't. You still get the sword. Okay. I mean, Interesting. It, the general recommendation is say yes. Mm. Um, so try and tell people, yes, they can, but then also if if they fail a roll, make it costly. Mm. Right. And that seems like a, that's a, a cool way to... I feel like I could parametrically generate uh, like <laughs> what a cost is. Mm. Like, okay, well... Roll me up cost that's equivalent to this thing, and I, I think you could do that with nodes, or especially if everything had like a monetary value. Monetary values make things very, very easy because then everything right. gets fungible. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, I'm reminded of a conversation um, that Jordan Peterson was having with a economist the other day about how costing things is actually a super, super difficult problem, and it's. It's not like, oh, everything has a, a value associated with it. It's like each person has a whole value system associated with everything that is also influenced right. by everyone else's value system that's associated with everything. And like it's this huge... Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's this huge so negotiation I, I thinking, that's happening all the time. Exactly. And I was hoping that uh, we could... I mean, obviously, it, it would not be the base a really simple base version that I'm conceiving of. But one of the things that would be very natural to me to expand into one of these modules that we want to build and then plug in mm. would be the negotiation where you're going back and forth with a different agent that has both, there's the objective center, there is my uh, values and my personality and my inside space and their inside space. Mm. And then we're talking back and forth about how to, how to maximize the objective shared space against what I value and against what they value. And there's like this optimization iterative approach. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is how I first conceive of, uh, of a negotiation module communication. Right. I think we're talking about negotiation and communication quite a bit 
Mm. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is kind of what the whole game is, right? Like when you go to an island and it gives you five options, that's the game negotiating with you. It's like, hey, here's what I have to offer you. What is it that you are interested in? Right. What can we Right. What can we trade here? Right. And um, to get that to have a compelling gameplay experience against an NPC that has memory. Because then, like, uh, I would think we were talking about how there'd be, like, people in the town. Like, this town has some people in it. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, I want to meet a baker. And it's like, well, we're going to roll against some people. And it's like, oh, we found one person, but now there's only a bit of people. A baker and a bit of people. (laughs) Right, right. There is a baker, but he's most of everyone. Right, right. And this comes back around to, like, the, the stuff. Mm. Uh, you have three stuff in your backpack. Mm. You have some people in town, and maybe some people is 15, or some people is whatever. Right, depending on how you roll. Right. So right. You, you wouldn't exactly. have three stuff in your backpack. You'd have a bit of stuff. A bit of stuff. And it's like, do I have something useful? I'm like, uh... Yes, or no, or yes, but now you have no more stuff. <laughs> right, that's all the stuff you had in your backpack, as it turns out. Or no, and also you have no more stuff. Or uh, it turns <laughs> out you packed more than you thought. Like, you don't have a solution. Like, I don't know, you could pick outcomes. I don't, mm. I'm not sure how we could... I feel like there's a lot of madness we could go just with that kind of procedural, basically typing in the nodes for what is relevant to breadwinner mm. and then having it do a trade. Here's some trade options and then you trade around until eventually you get what you need. All the bread. All the bread. And it, honestly, the, the most minimal viable project is you have a bunch of parameters and nodes that's static. You're not exploring and you're just trading you start with a, a bit of everything or yeah. something like yeah. that. Or you just start with all the time, or you start with a lot of time. Sure. Oh, actually, here's here's a gameplay. Here's a game we I think we could make. Mm-hmm. You start the game, and you have some time. And then it's just like you can roll against time to generate here's all the bread-related stuff. And then right. you just keep playing the game until eventually you get your bread all the way up to all of the bread. And mm. it's like chance to in- increase quantity of like, oh, but then you get a bit of salt or you get a bit of whatever. Mm. Do you have to have just all the bread or can you have anything else? Well, yeah. uh, I was thinking I was thinking the easiest way to do it is like you achieve having all the bread and yeah. we're not punishing for people for having whatever else they pick up along the way. Um, right. Well, that seems like something we could actually make, or I could mm-hmm. actually work on, because it's a spreadsheet. And yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Well, you could make it. In, yeah. It seems like you could make it in Python pretty easy, right? Like, with just like with a text input. Uh, probably. I don't. Uh, I'm not very good at Python. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think that's something. Like, I, I would generate the the engine first. Uh, I would probably, okay, so recommendations. How, how do you think I should go about this? So I could go and try and make it in Python, but that'll be learning Python while I go. Mm-hmm. Or if I could just go with what I have right now, I mean, I can't work on it until like Tuesday, but I could just try and populate uh, a spreadsheet with oh, yeah. all of the bread related nodes. Yeah, do that, do that. And like, oh, well, all the, yeah, all the breadwinner nodes and some examples of trades, I guess, or, or maybe all the trades that are available. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Is this, does this sound like a good way to try and get into it again? If you can do it in the universal architect node hierarchy structure, then we can have universal architect solve it to make sure that right. your node structure and node trades thing is a solvable map uh that sounds really awesome i i don't it doesn't immediately jump out to me how exactly we do that um so but in okay so in um 
in the specification. Oh, let's see. I have to share my screen again. Let's see. Present right. a window. Uh, this window. Okay. So in the specification, uh, if you go to, once more, if you go to drohunts.org slash universal architect uh, and download specification, you have to download the UA calc and the specification. It won't work by itself. Although I could put the specification in it so that it auto generates the help specification when you run it and there's no specification. That would be kind of clever. Um, so in the specification file, I really should do that. In the specification file, any node that you define is basically a trade. It's like saying this operation consumes things that are negative and generates things that are positive. Any node or yeah, any node that only consumes things will be solved. So Gunship Titania only consumes bridge and firepower, doesn't generate anything. And so that tells the that tells the solver, okay, this thing needs to be solved because it's not generating anything right now, but it should be generating something. So, you know, let's figure out how to how to meet the requirements of this node. So in Breadwinner, you just generate a a win condition node that says like negative seven bread or whatever. And then like if if you've got seven tiers of of quantities or whatever, uh then the negative right. seven would stand for all the bread. And then okay, so anything that isn't specified as a node, so like Gunship Titania is specified as a node, uh firepower, nowhere is there a node called firepower. And so anything that's not specified as a node anywhere in the specification is treated as a resource. So it, it isn't something that does something. It's just something that you can have or, or generate right. or consume. Um, so if you do so that... So I've been the, using... Yeah. If you, if you generate it that way, then that. the way that you generate resources is that you generate trades for them, right? You don't say, like, there is such a thing as bread. You just say, like, you can get bread by doing this. Right. So, okay, so let's take, let's take the node generator... Can can we modify the node generator easily such that instead of being counting everything, because everything right now is countable, mm -hmm. it's four hundred firepower. Mm -hmm. Could you reimagine this as it has a lot of of firepower and most firepower and a bit of firepower? Uh, and it's like yeah. in order to support it, I mean, we could just use the node would be something like this laser gun. <laughs> consumes a bit of power to well, produce a, a moderate, like a medium amount of firepower. It's like, oh, that's good efficiency. And then when you generate a spaceship, it keeps, instead of discreetly counting, it rolls against your resources. So like you might end up with a super efficient ship or a super inefficient ship mm -hmm. because it's, it's rolling against what it needs. It's like, okay, well, we ran out of power when we're designing. So we need to go add more power. It's like, well, this took six power modules and this thing because by the time we were done building it, now we actually ended up having to, to restock our resources or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't make it do the resource balance in another way. Um, I'm, I don't remember it well enough to know how much work that would be, but it doesn't seem like it would be a lot of work. It would, certainly wouldn't be all the work. It certainly wouldn't be all the work. <laughs> it it might, seems like it would be a medium amount of work. Yeah, some work. Yeah. So um, I, the, the thing I was thinking as far as the universal architect, the, the utility of universal architect in this specific case of, of prototyping and bootstrapping breadwinner is that you wouldn't use it for the engine itself. You just use it to validate that your node structure, that all your trades were, that it was it was possible to reach um the endpoint that you had in mind via the trades that you're trying to do so like obviously it would be easy for you to to um to do that it would be easy for you to say like okay well uh you know you can trade wheat for bread and then like you can get all the bread that way and, and there's something that generates wheat right like you can trade time for wheat and wheat for bread and now you can win the game right um but if we if we use it to validate it then we can also use it later like you were saying to to do other things with it 
So like if you if you're using the trades and you're saying like plus one is a pinch and plus two is a little and plus three is a right. bit, right? Then you can you can enter those numbers in. And it will be able to tell you if the trades are a valid path, but then also later you won't have to re-enter all the nodes again to uh, to figure out how you can uh, how you can make the game work, right? Or, or to, to tell the game again what it is it needs to do. Right. So. I just, I just, I'm thinking about, I don't know if this might be, this seems like a fledgling idea, but also uh, insane. So they have your spaceship and you get your guns on it. And mm -hmm. it's like, I want to fire the gun. It's like, here's five options. <laughs> and it's like, fire the guns. <laughs> and it's like rolling against the energy you have and you click the button and it's like, well, now you have less energy or... <clears throat> No, that was fine. You shot the gun and your energy systems are fine. And like it seems like it could be using the same exact mechanics as like rolling down through your system. It's like, oh that's good, but now your engines are broken. <laughs> or whatever. Like you have less you have less engines now because you got unlucky on one of your rolls. Sure. Because it was walking down the the hierarchy tree, rolling on all the systems and seeing if they all showed up the way you need to. Mm, right right well i like i don't think you need engines to fire your guns but certainly like maybe one of your engineers is like injured now because you fired your guns because he had to do maintenance on the power systems or something right right something in that hierarchy tree can be affected yeah so then, like every time you do it and this could be the same thing as like if you want to make a loaf of bread it's like okay making a loaf of bread rolls against the bread hierarchy tree and then it rolls out all of the things. Mm. And like, you might, if you have a nice bakery set up, you might be able to like hit make bread and nothing. It costs you literally nothing because you succeeded your rolls on everything. And you mm -hmm. can just like keep baking bread. And then your gameplay loop is like bake bread until eventually you you fail a roll. It's like okay, right. well now we've gone from having a bit of salt to zero salt. Mm. Now you can't bake bread anymore. No salt. Right. Or right. you would need well, you wouldn't, need to have at you wouldn't least just you some wouldn't just wheat. break you wouldn't bake a little bread at a time if you had a bakery you'd break bake a lot of bread right and so then right. your rolls are harder right and and so like the idea would be like increase the amount of like do you want to generate bread five oh, options yeah. bake a little bread bake some bread buy some bread right bake a lot of bread uh you know right. steal all the bread. Okay, what if it's what if it's like uh, the, the parameter is like um, the the hard trade input is increase or decrease your quantity of X, so it's like go from some to a lot. Mm. So it's like it's like add one to your quantity for, of red. Right? right. It's like so then then all your trades are going to be five options plus one to whatever it is in this case bread mm. and then it here's the here's the cost the cost is roll against money at whatever mm. just, or like roll against uh, ingredients or roll against bakery right the bakery has an oh, option sure. that's sure. got the hierarchy you, you burn the so bakery like, down but you get all the bread exactly exactly it doesn't seem like that would be a productive so that, option but okay sure <laughs> I mean, if the goal is to get all the bread, it's sure. Fine. Yeah. Oh, I'm. I'm just saying, like, I don't see how that would actually work. Like, maybe you're, I don't know, you use up all your fuel, but right, or or something. Oh, there goes, you go. You you, you it, disassemble the bakery and burn it in the oven to bake the bread. Or, or I don't know. You like it, it's a way to it's a way to summarize. That would actually be that would actually be really easy to do, right? Like buildings are made of wood. You need wood to fuel the baker, the oven. Like, where are you going to get the wood? Well, the bakery's always there. It's like, no, 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 we're not taking the bakery apart. And every time the computer's like, you could take the bakery apart. This is this is the type of thing I'm hoping it can come up with. Or it's just to be like, <laughs> out of out of left field, um, uh, odd suggestions of like how to get ahead. It's like, oh, okay. This, 
you can anyway yeah but yeah. I, I think the idea of having the like uh, a negotiation is in this format the left hand side is like you get a a set thing mm. and then the cost is somewhat unknown and then you know what you're rolling against to get your cost it's like we're going to go look at this node mm. rolling so it could be this i think we could do this format discrete increase or decrease on mm -hmm. a thing and then node we're rolling on to get it mm, yeah yeah and the node has some resources in it or, or some operations that it's doing that will inform what it is that you're the result of that role is or the difficulty of the role or whatever Right, I think it would just propagate down the tree, like you're designing, like design a spaceship around 400 firepower, and it builds the node tree. Hmm. This would be the same thing as like design me a bread, roll on this node tree, and that's going to tell me what it costs. And then you take those costs and you roll it against your resources that you have, and then you see if anything changed. So the output of any decision is going to be the the change in all of your inventory quantities. Yeah. I was just thinking that it would be really fun to make the progression game like the the what legacy version or the legacy structure of the game. Like when you first play Breadrunner, it's just like you've got one option. It's just bake all the bread. And so you press that and it's like you win. And then you play again and it's like, OK, well, now you've got now it adds more node complexity to the game. So now it's like you can't just bake the bread. You've got to get the flour or whatever. And then. And so every time right. you run it, it it keeps iterating the depth of the tree that it's using to generate the the trades that you're getting. And so eventually you get to the part where it's like, well, now you can like burn down the bakery or go out in the forest and cut wood or whatever to fuel the fire to bake the bread or, you know, or, you know, like you use the mill and you mill all the flour and then you take the mill apart for the wood and use the wood from the mill to, you know, in the in the right oven or whatever it is but you keep adding that that structure and so then you so, can have your you've got your your maximum depth resource tree that you've generated and then it just traverses that from the top down as you play the game right it keeps adding leaf nodes and then in between rounds you can say like what leaf node do you want to add to your tree for the next play round exactly yeah uh so the game's like uh i don't know uh, Egyptian rat slap or um, mm, mm -hmm. Mao. Any game where like the Uno is a good example of this. A lot of people will house rule. If you win Uno, you get to add a rule. Yeah. And now yeah. the next game you continue. So like Breadwinner, you play the game, and then like the reward for beating the game is, or the requirement to start your next one is to write your own node. And we have some parameters. Like it's a node that's underneath bread, mm. a sub subbread system mm. or it gives you some options and one of them is write your own node maybe the first couple times you play you just choose from pre-selected or pre-generated nodes but after a while it's like hey you could write your own what what do you want to right. be the thing that grows wheat or whatever right I, I mean so then if you take that format and we actually if if i'm right about this then we can take that format and then you end up with bread or whatever else you want, and that's your seed. Mm. And then the gameplay is you're iterating and adding nodes kind of organically as you go, and then you can take that whole thing and export it to someone else. And now we're we're trading node structures around. Yeah, yeah. And then we should, if I'm if I'm right about how this system would work, if you got the nodes to have a relational map somehow, and I think you'd have to build it in the giant hierarchy. I think you're going to have to have bread at the top. Or whatever else at the top. And you, I, I don't know how to get two trees that are next to each other to talk to each other, but right yeah, now it doesn't as matter. The, as long as the resources are named the same, as long as the nodes and the resources have the same names, then, well, like in UA calc, you can just slap them in the same spec file and it'll, like, both the trees will talk to each other. They'll use each other's nodes to solve things because it's all just okay. in one big node tree. Because then, then you should end up happening is like I can imagine you and I trading back a save file and I play it and I add a node and I throw it back to you. And then I think just by playing that game, I can make space wheat out of it. Yeah, well, right? and then you're going to have the... trading and we're going to have like 
yeah, as long as the visual aspects like, well, aren't uh, aren't a problem. That's kind of what they were doing in Spore, right? Where you had like you could make a creature and it had these certain qualities, and then you upload it, and then other people can find it in their game or or use it in their game or whatever. Right. Um, yeah, basically. But I, I will want to build the whole the whole thing out organically, and then you end up with because like then you should have like freighters in your node trees. Like uh, in order to do all this stuff, we also have like a trading post or something like that. And trading post has got this, and then I, later on I can add in noting for like the uh, here's the node is like the the units of um, the systems. It's like a it's like a shipping system or mm. it's like freighters yeah yeah and then so you it, can take your adds freighter the and maritime like, cargo resource that you can use right. to carry things around or, or whatever and that would be fine and then also you can like but if and then i beat that game and then i add in engines and i should slowly be able to rebuild universal architect like i don't see why i couldn't build out organically from the gameplay loop the same exact thing that you built already in Universal Architect, one piece at a time. Oh, the the solver or the specification? The specifications. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be really cool. I mean, another thing you could do would be to delete nodes that you don't want, right? Like, oh, I want to play this game, but it was really annoying to have to deal with all the engineers running around. Like, anything that deals with engineers, just take that out of the game, right? Uh, I don't know how that would work exactly, but oh, you I mean, just, then you'd you just have do a to... search on the engineer, like you remove the engineer node and then you do a search on anything that requires the engineer node and just like delete that requirement or comment it out really. Cause, cause it's got comments in the spec file. So you, oh, it just right. adds a comment to it. And it's like engineers were commented out. Oh, that would work. Okay, this this seems like a thing we could actually make, <laughs> um, and it's got all of the qualities of infinite play and all of the things we're excited about in fledgling. So, make so my homework is going to be to write up some nodes, download Universal, Universal Architect, Architect, and and write start writing a spec file for Breadwinner. Uh, right. Well. Also, I'm going to see if I can uh, figure out how to make the node calculator use a our our seven quantities sure. tool. Sure. Sure. Um, I mean, I probably won't actually do this in Python. I work almost exclusively in pencil and paper. Okay. So, All right. Well, yeah, you can um, you can look at the code if you want. If you don't want to look at the code, then just like write down what it is you want it to do, and I can I can implement it. Okay, I think I think my objective is to uh, uh, write up a very simple node tree for bread, mm. and then um, see if I can also write down the pseudocode for how I think the node hierarchy should interact with itself when it's being executed on. Okay. All right. Cool. I like it. Got some homework. Sweet. All right. Well, it it's been happens. it's been just about an hour, so here we go. We did it. Perfect. I will. We did it. We got. Save this and got an objective. Yeah. Cool. All right. Excited. I will talk to you uh, pretty soon. I am gone all weekend, so I probably can't edit this and upload it uh, at least until Tuesday. <laughs>